Hey, what's up everybody? Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to use the warp stabilizer effect in After Effects. Warp stabilizer is a great post-production tool that you can use to stabilize footage that would otherwise be unusable. So for example, right here, we have um, uh, some footage I shot and at first, you know, there's nothing really cool here. But right here, if you play it, you can see it goes back and forth, back and forth as we raise up and it can create a sort of nauseating feel behind it as we, you know, kind of climb towards the sky. It's a great shot if it would be stabilized. And so what we can do is we can actually apply the warp stabilizer and do that. Now, a couple of things that you need to know before you apply warp stabilizer is that it can't stabilize everything. If it's extremely shaky um, or if the camera is looking from left to right, back, up, down, it's going to have a very hard time figuring out where it should stabilize itself. So the first thing you need to do when stabilizing a shot is make sure to cut the shot down to the only the part that you're going to be using. So I want it to start here. So I'm going to bring the trim comp area to right there. And then I want it to go on to right about there. And so I'm going to drag the comp. Whoops. So I'm going to drag the comp end right here. I'm going to right click and hit trim comp to work area. So now the entire comp and the clip is just the only the footage that I want. There's no of the there's no uh, shots of the camera turning towards me or different planes. All you see is the overhead view starting to take place. So once you have your shot trimmed down, it's really simple. Just drag the warp stabilizer VFX um, effect onto your piece of footage. Uh, you can find that in the effects and presets by searching warp stabilizer or you can go to the distort tab up in effect and you can get it there. So once we drop this on here it's gonna start analyzing the background and this is going to be a frame-by-frame -frame procedure. So that means that if you have a slower computer or a really large piece of footage it is going to take a little while. As you can see right here um, it's about 10% through um, this, I'm running a quad core with a GTX 760 um, graphics card that it's utilizing right now. So I have a very fast computer and it's still taking a little while for just, you know, a three second clip. So understand that it's going to take some time and every time you make an adjustment, it's probably going to have to reanalyze. While it's analyzing, one thing to note is that footage that has motion blur cannot be stabilized. Motion blur is something that just can't be corrected. Um, motion blur is when there's low light like this scene right here and if you see right here it's uh, running in slow motion right now but as you can see that's a great time to see that see the blurs going back and forth so I used warp stabilize on this piece of footage and before it was just as shaky as the other one so now it's nice and smooth but it doesn't matter because there's all of that that motion blur in there that just makes it a big mess it looks stable, but it looks like something weird's going on. And so, yeah, if it has any motion blur in it, the footage can't really be stabilized that well. I mean, you can stabilize it. It'll make it look maybe a little bit better, but it's not going to be, you know, worthy of like a commercial or something like that. It just, it's going to be a low grade piece of footage. So whenever you think that you're going to have to warp stabilize, try to shoot in a very fast um, setting on your camera, meaning the shutter rate is very, very quick so that you don't get motion blur. So we are now back over here and it has analyzed and then right after it's done analyzing a orange bar will come up here that says um, stabilizing and that process usually is pretty quick. So now we've transitioned into a actually a beautiful clip right here. So as you can see it's almost perfectly stable going up and that is one of the beauties that After Effects can do. Um, but if you did, if you got a good eye you noticed that one of the things Warp Stabilizer does is it zooms the footage in. So it's using the edges, it's cutting out the edges so that it can um, basically have more space. So it's easier to stabilize footage that's closer to the center because it isn't moving, you know, like circles and stuff like that. So the farther away you are from the center of the circle, the more that it'll, um, the more distance that'll be covered with a, sm a slight degree change. So basically that means that it has to zoom itself in to make sure that you won't see, you know, extreme warping on the edges, which is what it's trying to do. I have it using stop, um, stabilize, crop, and auto scale. Sometimes a lot of people just go with stabilize only. It won't do the auto scale with it, but I like to have the auto scale because it, it kind of just, I mean, it does a lot of the work for you here. 
Now, right here, it says 113.5%, so it means it scaled it up by 113. 115% is kind of the limit for quality-wise. Um, after 115%, unless you're working with higher footage, it's going to start looking bad. So what I mean by that is this is a great trick to use if you're trying to warp stabilize um, footage is create a composition with the, uh, the next step down in resolution. So this was shot at 2.7K, but my resolution of my composition is um, 1080p. So what that means is that even though it zoomed in 113.5%, it still just looks like a normal piece of footage because the resolution is such a smaller, uh, so much smaller than what it was originally shot on. And so that is a great way to, if you shot some 1080p footage and you're fine with it being 720, you can usually perform a pretty good stabilization by dropping down the, resol the end result resolution. And so now that we zoom back out, we see that it has actually corrected um, everything pretty well. And it looks like just a normal piece of footage. It doesn't look like um, doesn't look like uh, warped or anything like that. If you notice at the beginning, you can kind of see the warp stabilization. Watch right over here. It almost moves back and forth unnaturally. And that's kind of what um, warp stabilization is doing, is it's just trying to keep what's center center and what's on the edges at the edges the whole time. But with just a click of the button, you can get a good warp stabilization. Now, if I think this is too smooth, um, as in I think it stabilized too much, maybe I got too much warp going on the edges, I can just remove the stabilization a little bit, uh, reduce the smoothness, and now it's going to run through the restabilization process. It doesn't have to reanalyze the frames as long as you don't change anything there. And then now we can go ahead and rerun this. And if you see, my scale dropped to 111%. It doesn't need to scale that much anymore. Uh, only 2% less, but it doesn't need as much. And if I keep dropping that down, the scale will go down and down and down. So that it, it removed that little anomaly we had down here. Um, so I kind of like this actually a little bit better than having 50%. So you kind of got to mess around with the numbers. And now we can try, I'll show you, like, let's say I wanted, a, you know, 272% smoothness. Watch our auto scale. It's going to go now up to 122% as it tries to restabilize everything. So if you see, um, the girl over here is cut off a little bit more than she was before. And you start to get a little bit of weird movements in the center. Some of the, I mean, we're going back and forth now a little bit as it's really over trying. So more is not always better. Dial it into what you, you know, what you wanna do. And then you have um, the method right here. And the method is how it's going to actually warp it. Subspace warp is a great warp to start off with. Um, it's going to manipulate and stretch data, stretch the edges, stretch things is basically what it's going to do. If, however, you want to do a position, scale, and rotate, it's just going to affect just those things, the position, the scale, and the rotation. So it's not going to try to warp anything. It's just going to try to move the footage back and forth to try to get everything looking right. What this does is it causes these little, if you can see right there, look at the, look at the house right here how it's kind of bending. It looks like it's right there. You can see it looks like a piece of paper that you're bending back and forth. Like um, what's in front of me is all water or something. And that's because without the subspace warp, it can't undo the those effects. Um, subs, uh, the subspace, it's, it's kind of doing that exact same thing, but the subspace is rebuilding different parts of the footage. So now it corrects itself almost. Subspace Warp has come a long way. When it was first released, it was actually one of the worst ones to choose, but now I usually go with Subspace Warp overall. So let's try this on another shot. Um, let's go into here, and we're going to go with another shot. It's kind of like the exact first one, but I want to show you what happens. So we have this shot, which is just someone walking, um, exactly like the night one, except there's no motion blur in this one. And the motion blur is really the big thing here. So if we drop warp stabilizer on here real quick, if we look around, the footage um, is perfect on all sides. It's exactly what we want, so we don't need to cut it down. So it's going to run really quickly. 
All right, now it is done, and so we're getting into the stabilization. It's gonna go through that process really quickly, and now we have our footage. So the end result is actually a lot better than the first one. And you see, because there isn't the motion blur like the night scene, it's actually a perfect um, track right here. So it, it looks very stabilized, and it um, almost looks like you're using a steady cam. It does look slightly warped. You just kind of get an eye for it. You can see that it's slightly warped on the edges. But this is a perfectly usable footage, and I'd use it in anything that I'm working with. So that is the warp stabilize um, effect in Adobe After Effects. Remember, you can just mess around with these settings to try to figure it out, uh, move the smoothness up and down, and you're really just going to have to mess around with it to find the best stabilization for your piece of footage. Some footage can't be stabilized due to motion blur or excessive movement, but I'd always give it a shot, see how it works. And thanks everyone for joining me, and until next time guys, see ya.